Hello and welcome to Structured Change. This particular presentation is a wrap up to the SIPOC series. We started off with the overview, we went through C for customer, we went through to O for output, I for input, S for supplier, and we then we finished off with P for process. We, we gained insights to a particular function as a whole, and we also received insights within each of the SIPOC letters to how the organization sees, behaves, and potentially the values that the organization has as a whole. This final video or presentation is going to look at once you've done more than one or potentially three or more SIPOCs across the organization under different functions, how to bring it together in a picture that actually allows upper management or the organization as a whole appreciate where are some of the levers in change and where the change journey might be able to take you. Doing this has some benefits across people, process and technology because people, of course, is the, the heart of structured change in the sense of looking at how people behave, their values and beliefs exist across the organisation. Process, which is very much the fundamentals of SIPOC in the beginning, is how information moves from one area to another, inputs, outputs, outputs, inputs. But then finally, technology. Now, technology is something that um, we do not progress to be experts in, but technology is a form of automation. It's a form of alignment, um, integration, etc. Understanding um, the combination of how SIPOCs fit together provides an, an insight or a window for the CIO or the IT department to actually look at things and say, wow, we understand the business, but we didn't understand how the business operated at that level. This creates um, value opportunities in technology. Again, in process, it creates opportunities for um, consolidation of um, duplication of processes throughout the organization. And of course, for people and HR, we can look at competency uh, management frameworks, we could look at things of um, moving people around the organization who have might have been in a function for a long time and do what we call a day in the life of, which is another thing that structured change promotes in a way, uh, sorry, as a way or method in which stakeholders have got a different view in a different area of the organization. We'll talk about that in another presentation series. So sit back and let's wrap up this SIPOC series and what it looks like to bring it all together so stakeholders can understand where we currently are, but again, all those opportunities and the visibility we now have um, to move the organization forward. So without further ado, let's wrap it up now, the SIPOC series revisited. Thank you. Okay, so we've completed now all five columns or areas of our SIPOC for our engineering division. Okay, so what we've been able to do now is go through each of the areas of the SIPOC, document it down and place it in a complete table. So when we bring it all together and you take a look at what we've got now on the screen, again, we started with customer, then we did output, then supplier, then input, and then we ended with the process, bring it all together. So we can see demand translated through to value out the other side, or what we hope to be actual um, translation of value. So we've got this one table, and we're actually now able to speak to engineering and challenge them and say, well, are you doing all the work that you believe you should be doing as engineering? And, or are you doing work that is beyond engineering? And in this case, they ended up doing work beyond their own engineering function due to circumstances that changed periodically and on occasion they were asked to do a particular task and then it became the norm. So if you look at asset management principles, the alignment, the assurance and the leadership at times was probably lacking that didn't stop this or understand it was happening in the first instance. Now, after going through an organization, if you look on the screen here, and again, this is samples because I've simply copied the engineering one across, you can see laying it out logically, you would like to think that the inputs and the outputs all linked to everybody else's inputs and outputs and there weren't any gaps. 
but also to the suppliers and the customers within the overall organization were also a match one for one, meaning that you identified and everyone's got the same terminology. What will happen, of course, is over a period of time is certain deliverables or inputs, outputs in an organization will be called different things in different parts of the area in different functions. And that's down to history, could be a change of system, etc. So there's an opportunity here to create a mapping table or a glossary of terms to help the organization move forward. So again, what you're seeing here is this logical connection that you can test. Now let's just take that a step further. If I then, and again, you can really only do this in a mapping tool. Um, I won't go into that in this um, video presentation, but by mapping the individual entities across to one another, you build a picture of the interconnectivity, what is standalone, what is interfaced, and of course, what is integrated. And this is a very powerful exercise to do because what you find is when you do map something like this, you find out where some of the orphans sit inside of an organization. For instance, if someone has mentioned an output that wasn't somebody else's input, for instance, you can kind of question that and say, well, how could that possibly be? Or haven't we actually interpreted what we're talking about? Now, let's just take that a step further and come to the punchline. By going through and doing a SIPOC of each function, mapping it all together, and you don't have to do every single function of the organization. It will depend accordingly if there are maintenance organization, manufacturing, or an operations. But by doing this exercise, you have actually come up with section 4.3 of ISA 55000, which is determining the scope of the asset management system. So rather than just guessing it and coming up and putting the boundaries up front, by doing this exercise, you've helped yourself, the functions, and the organization and top management understand what it is based upon their business, as opposed to having to ask anyone Here's the information itself. So we've got the asset management system. We've got the objectives coming through that system. And then we've got value coming out of the system itself. So if you look at then from an asset management principles point of view, you're seeking out to create alignment through the, through the system, assurance through the system to ensure what we're doing from inputs and outputs gets translated across the organization. We've got leadership that actually enables the organization to have an attitude, the ability and the appetite to do it in the first instance. And finally, value, which sits up here. So this presentation was the summary of how to take a SIPOC from one function, repeat it through an organization and come to a landing that provides you a basis for change, a foundation map, but most importantly, you have just come up with the scope of your asset management system. Thank you for watching this series on SIPOC, and we invite you to look at our many other videos at structuredchange.tv.